encounter with the uh, Masons. I told you about the encounter with the Masons in D.C., didn't I? You did. Oh, okay. Did you ever, you, you never got anything out of them? No, it was, uh, it, it became very, uh, a very awkward, quiet breakfast. And uh, shortly thereafter, we left. And they probably sacrificed a baby to... Uh, <laughs> to end the conversation? Yeah, during, during <laughs> this guy the... just won't go away. Yeah. Nobody got a baby? <laughs> Take it. <in> <laughs> Oh my God, I'll leave. Jeez. <laughs> Fair enough. You can have your eggs in privacy. <laughs> oh, I'd like to welcome my good friend Kokomo to the podcast. Welcome, Kokomo. Thank you. Glad to be here tonight. It's a little bit of a uh, hodgepodge setup here. I wish we had uh, more microphones. <laughs> hey, hey, listen, I, I, I'm impressed. But it's when fun. you said you could come, I was like, just come. I'm not going to say no. I mean, no, we, no I'm glad we to have, be here. We have things, we have out. imminent topics that need to be addressed and we need an expert witness to address those topics and you know as far as you know a perfect podcast we just need content you know we need to we need to get this out because fire's hot what do they say make hay when the sun is shining that kind of thing i don't know don't let a good crisis go to waste oh that's a george soros or a uh that's not george soros that's a uh obama what was his? What was it? What was his uh, campaign director? That was that's one of his things he liked to say. Let's just get all political about it right out front. No, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a, it's, it's a common just, thing. Uh, this is attributes it to Winston Churchill. Don't let a good crisis go to waste. That makes sense. I got a question for the British. Oh, I got a question What's for the. the I, got a, I got a question for the world. I had a buddy who came back from Ireland, and he was there for a few uh, weeks just recently. How come the British get a pass on everything? You know what I mean? Like, they've been pretty awful to the world for yeah, a like, long time. You talk about like hassling people for being imperialist. That's a yeah. They were like the imperialist. The original, yeah, that's the model. For <laughs> that's it. my point is they've, you know, we've we've had our alliances, but they've also been pretty awful to a lot of people, including us. So are they really our friends? The Redcoats? They wouldn't be if they had the upper hand, I think, since we kind of like, it's like my little brother. Um, you can you do like that, like yeah, just right. commit and take, yeah. <laughs> my little take brother, control. <laughs> Kokomo knows my little brother. He outweighs me probably by that's funny you still call him little brother. Well, that's the thing. About 100 pounds by now, he probably outweighs me. When we got to be like, I was probably 18, he was 15. I was coming around a corner and I we bumped into each other, just blind corner in the house. And I pushed him because I'm the older brother. I'm that's like, what you do. That's where you're going. And I went in my bedroom and I was like, God, I can't do that. <laughs> he's, he's enormous. <laughs> and I think that's kind of the dynamic between the US and Britain now is the younger brother has outgrown and has like gotten to be like the more the stronger power but i think if the uk had the the geographic and you know just the dominating prowess then they'd still be not real kind to us what do you think kokomo what's your opinion on those damned red coats you know i i'm gonna have to stay out of this one this is uh is this is this because you have political or professional interactions with some British people you don't want to offend? No, <laughs> no I certainly do not have. Uh, well, at least that I'm aware of uh, professional interactions with the uh, British people. Uh, but I can say what professional interactions I've had. They've always been great to me. So, uh, you know, <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> call me a friend. Of they the need us now. <laughs> I got I got a conspiracy theory about this. You want to hear my conspiracy theory about it? I think that 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 Meghan Merkel, I think she's CIA, and I think we sent her across the pond to 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 just finish the job. You know what I mean? <laughs> like infiltrate that family, and then just turn them all into terrible racists, which they are, and just make sure the whole world knows about it. Well, she infiltrated I mean, she's their done, brains out. She's done nothing but like make them. <laughs> You get you get my point though. Like she's definitely acted in our interest as far as breaking up the royal family. Gosh, if I were going to be compromised, you got you got you got to do I'll this. Just, sorry, I don't need my wife to hear me say that. So it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I 
I don't know if that's a it's a theory that anyone else has thought about, but every time she causes controversy for the royal family, I'm cheering. I'm like, go, yeah, they are terrible, and we're not friends, you know. Well, and I, that all, I think that all became more public in the uh, recent years after uh, Queen died, and yeah, uh, everything got she's, so nasty over there. But... I just think she's CIA. She must be. She's probably from the farm. We probably raised her. Told her all the kooky woke nonsense and then said, just sent her across the pond and said, go get them, tiger. <laughs> all right. Well, welcome to the uh, Conspiracy Dad podcast. We're so glad everyone could join us. My name is Dante. This is my good friend, Dave. And we're joined today by our good friend, Kokomo. We're only going to call him Kokomo because uh, we don't want him to lose his job. And he's here. <laughs> He's he's here as a consultant for this uh, kind of improv episode where we're doing an update on the uh, latest UFO. It's so weird to even say this. Okay, this is not, it sounds like, it sounds kooky. Let's all like take our minds back about seven or eight years. And I say this same thing and it sounds bananas. If I say the congressional UFO hearing that happened a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Now, if you go back like seven or eight years and you heard that, you would go, that's sounds, it's a fictional, this is sci-fi, right? We're talking like nut, nut Yeah, job? well, just the fact that like I was listening in and then at some point, I forget who it was. It might've been, uh, I forget which one it was. One of the guys behind a podium, but he says, well, we want to thank, uh, you know, credible sources like uh, Mr. Corbell and Mr. Knapp for being here. And I was mm -hmm. like, what the heck are those guys doing here? Like, yeah, just you got the Art Bells of the world at this Senate hearing. It's crazy. And I don't want, I mean, full disclosure, I, I've, I've communicated with George. George, I hope you don't hear this and think I think any less of you. I just, I, I just feel like things have accelerated to where it's like Congress. It's, it used to be just Stephen Greer, selling trips out in the desert with night vision goggles to try to summon ufos and it's kind of oh you're making money off the ufo business and now it's like uh well aoc and um burchette what's his name tim tim burchette is that am i saying burchett Bur yeah your new tim favorite burchett of tim tennessee yeah you say burchett or burchette i think they kept rep i'm pretty sure they were saying burchett or Birchett. Yeah, that's, Birchett. That's how they're saying That's like it. Which, Louisiana way, French, right? Uh, Well, yeah, maybe. I'm yeah. just saying that, that name. Yeah, yeah. It's like French, but not real French. I was it's just like, thinking like, oh, yeah, no, it's not like Birchett. Nothing Boucher. Like that, yeah. Tim Boucher. <laughs> he wouldn't go for that. Um, That he, that guy is awesome. He is, uh, he is hilarious. He was, yeah, I, I didn't know anything about him. And you sent the text out to all the bird dogs guys like you guys this hearing is on so i hop over there immediately i'm not watching i'm just streaming it audible and uh and this i just keep hearing the same voice saying the coolest stuff <laughs> i like how every time he spoke at the hearing he would always have to talk about himself for oh, a bit for sure yeah it wasn't like, like he could just talk about yeah the aliens flying in our airspace he had to talk about like <laughs> his daughter calling him a boomer and his yeah. wife who loves him so much and then he'd get around to talking about the aliens flying yeah. through our airspace <laughs> i don't know kokomo what do you think well one of the things first off that i'm i'm glad to hear both of you use the terminology ufo uh, I was thinking about this on the way over here today, and and I, I was listening to the congressional hearing, and they keep referring it to it as, as a UAP, unidentified aerial phenomenon. I'm old school. And well, not only are you on, old school, but 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 you're factual. One of the things I think, going back to the kookiness of the whole thing, the reason they changed the terminology to a phenomenon is being a phenomenon, it it automatically in your brain makes you think of something spiritual, something otherworldly something fake fairy tale and i think they do that so that they it gives them a, a, a the ability to put this stuff out more publicly without having a, a hard line in the sand and i think there is a hard line in the sand and i think ufo is the proper term um, taken well <laughs> yeah <laughs> but but the, but you're what you're saying is the word phenomenon opens the door to kind of woo woo exactly and exactly. and ufo that's, is just saying dude i just see something i don't know what that nice. is I, i'm not saying it's a ghost i'm not saying it's a spirit i'm not saying it's a interdimensional spirit creature 
Exactly. It's and just, that's and, and to me the word phenomenon, you know, it, it does. It kinda, but you see that that was really clearly by design that they started saying that. I, I think there I think it was. Even in that hearing, which we'll get more into it, but there was one of the things that that has bugged me about it, and I'm also not saying this isn't true. I'm just pointing out that it's like that's weird, is this reference to, well, it might not be aliens. And then you go, hold the phone. What do you t and they're all subtly implying that it's demons, it's aliens, or it's angels, it's interdimensional creatures, you know, things coming in and out of other dimensions. And it's like, dude, we haven't even established that there's other dimensions. So I don't, you know what I mean? It's like it immediately goes to this weird, uh, like you said, like it's not just, oh, I just saw something flying. Now it's like, well, there's more than one dimension. And sometimes they travel. It's like, that's a big leap. That's not a, we just saw something in the sky. That's things are coming from other dimensions. They're demons. Now, did They're they actually angels? use that? Uh, and maybe I missed that part. I didn't get that far into it. Did they actually use that? Uh, I they? don't think they did in the hearing, but they might have hinted at it. But definitely Grush, he has said that. So like when he wants, when people have asked him, say, was this aliens? Is it aliens? And he said, why? Well, he kind of like, he's really coy about it. And he's, I don't want to like nail it down because it, you know, and then he kind of talks about the physics of it. And he says something like that. Like, well, it could just be, he think some, he says it almost kind of like it's no big deal. Oh, it could be something from another dimension just popped over for a minute. And then you go, whoa, there's other dimensions? What, what are we even talking about? But that takes it right back into that phenom that, that that phenom phenomenal you know this this fairy tale side of it yeah that, yeah because when i hear him say hey guys this this isn't aliens i don't immediately go to angels or demons i immediately go to ah because it's it's us <laughs> no but he has said he has talked about that it might be something from another dimension and so has corbell and so like a lot of guys in um lou elizondo has said that uh, quite a few times, the, the, you know, this idea that they've said, well, it might be something that's been here for a long time. And it's just, we don't, we were just noticing it or we just, you know, we don't really notice it that often. And they talk about the physics and that it might be a multiverse kind of thing. And there's other universes and which, yes, that could be the case. But I'm just trying to say like, it's this weird, that's a big leap, right? To go from I saw something in the sky to now there's interdimensional creatures coming into our reality. And we, all that physics is just, it's theoretical. Sure. Even the, the, the multiverse, all of that, it's all theoretical. We have no evidence of any of it. Right. I mean, it could be true. I'm not saying it's not. Could be. I mean, I, I think that, I think that the, the inter, you know, whether it's a multiverse or interdimensional, it kind of goes Right back to this phenomenon thing. It goes back to a more spiritual realm to me, and I think that's where you're going a little bit with the with the angels and demons. Yeah, because um, and hey, man, you you could be right. You, you Catholics got it all nailed down. I, I, <laughs> I'm not saying that's what it is. I'm just concerned that that could easily be weaponized, or like those oh, stories absolutely. could be used to manipulate us. Sure. And then at the end of the day, you go what are we really looking at? And they go, well, we can't show you. Why? Well, because it's a demon and they disappear real quick. You know <laughs> what I mean? Or they're hard to catch on camera. And then you go, well, I can't prove or disprove anything that you're saying. So is this more to your point of like, like a psyop, take your eye off the ball sort of a thing? Like yeah. this is a hearing over transparency on unidentified objects or phenomenon. You've got pilots specifically talking about craft objects that they've seen yes and the hearing again is is on trying to get some transparency from the people that apparently know about this stuff so your point is more like this hearing is hey we we, we need to get to the bottom of this and the people that know about it what their tactic is is more like it might be demons and all of a sudden we're like wait a minute we're talking about other dimensions now what, yeah it's like the goalpost is shifting so yeah. quickly and I guess I'm okay with the goalpost shifting. I just wish that the people do asking the questions would really seriously consider those questions. So like Elizondo um, has talked about when he was running the UFO program at the Pentagon, that he was told not 
to look into this by a high-ranking general. This is his words, not mine. And that general reason said something to the effect of, well, we know what it is, so you don't need to look into this. And he thought it, he, he said, I thought it meant it was us, like black ops. Yeah. And then that general said, no, you're not hearing me. And he said, have you read your Bible re recently? And, and Elizondo was like, I, I have, what do you mean? He said, they're demons. We know that we can't do anything about it and just let, you know, drop it. That's from a high ranking general in the military. And he's also said, there's a lot of high ranking, um, just, uh, Congress and like people that have dealt with this subject since the 40s and 50s that were evangelical Christians, that that was their interpretation of what was going on. I'm not saying that's wrong. That could be right. But I just think that they dropped that in, 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 in these interviews and in this hearing. There's nobody else really going like, pause, like, what do you what do you really mean by that? And and also, what is your evidence of that? Like, why why are you even saying that? Like, right. that's yeah, that's um. I mean, that's a. I mean, it was enough. That's I think Elizondo. That's why he left the program, is because he was looking at it going, no, there's actually something in our airspace that we need to investigate, and you guys are not investigating it because of religious superstition, and that's why he left. He says anyway. Yeah. It seems like a pretty archaic way to approach things. I mean, when what I was thinking about was explanations in the Bible of of angels coming down and that sort of thing. I've heard the the idea that well, those were aliens, and there's no other way for people in that time to describe them except for they were angels. No then, human would descend from the sky like that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we watched right, Ghostbusters Ray. last night. <laughs> <laughs> So the flowers are still standing. <laughs> um, Boy, anyway, we really just jumped into this. Didn't the, we? Yeah, I, yeah, I think he's having Kokomo here. That's right. Just the, uh, he's no nonsense. Secret sauce that we needed. To... <laughs> so, uh, but I mean, it sounds to me like if I'm tracking with you, the point is, is we should be at a point now where we're trying to get to the bottom of what it is, not just explaining it away with like, these are demons, like what uh, we would have done in biblical times. Or is yeah, I guess I, I'd, I'd more like, I'd like people to respond. It's like when I first told you about this and you were like, you, my response is not, uh, is completely rational. You tell me that there are aliens flying in the air. I go, what? Are you kidding me? There's aliens? And then the, the same kind of response should be, there's, they, they might be demons. And you go, what? <laughs> are you kidding me? But no one does that. It seemed to be kind of like glossed over. Like it was just like, oh, yeah, well, it might just be demons from another dimension. And you go, well, I, I just I, I feel like Elon Musk should weigh in on this. I feel like there's some people that know more than us that should kind of come forward and say something, but they haven't. And so I don't know why. Well, uh, you know, I, I guess the only response I have to that is if, if this was a government cover up, PSYOP, whatever you want to call it, um, you know, there's not a better way to get people to back off of something than threatening their religion with demonic be, you know, hey, this is a demon. Anybody of any religion. Nobody wants to see is a gonna demon. Go, no, nope, I'm out. <laughs> Even the Satanist, if you actually threaten them with it, they're going to back off. And we're like, we, we, we're just kidding. We didn't really, we don't really want to go to hell. Okay. <laughs> right. We just like pig roast. <laughs> uh, we just like put on goat heads, run around in the woods, you know. Things that go. I, I don't know why I know what they do. <laughs> um, so since I kind of jumped in there, let's 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 bring it back in, Dave. Okay, I was going to say I thought you were just going to go with it. No, let's keep rolling, but let's give us some context. So I, yes, I kind of teed up that there idea, was yeah. a hearing, and that yeah. that could strike some people as odd. If you if this is odd to you that there was a UFO hearing, um, go do some research and then come back and watch this. But a lot has happened since 2016, and now we've gotten to this place where we have this UFO hearing, and there are, at this hearing, there were three main whistleblowers. I don't even know if they meet the criteria of whistleblower. They've been calling them that, but they're people who, they're at least like very reliable military and government officials that are coming forward and claiming, I would argue like 
various things. Cause like what yeah. Grush is claiming is not the same as what Fravor is claiming. And what Fravor is claiming is not, what, what was the third one? I even remember. Graves. Graves. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, what, what it's a perfect balance, which means it's a psyop. <laughs> it's a perfect balance of like Graves is what he's claiming is absolutely nuts. And what Fravor's claiming sounds very reasonable. And then Graves is like this place in the middle where it's kind of Fravor, but then also it's pretty nutty. I think like you said Graves twice. So are you saying like what no, Grush, Grush is? Grush is, yeah, Grush you're saying he's is like pretty the, outlandish. Right. Fravor is very reasonable. Yeah. He's not reading into it much, yeah. except he saw something crazy. And then Graves is like this also very reasonable, but he's also, he's pushing it a bit. He's like saying some stuff that's, because he's he's reflecting what, a bunch of people come to him mm -hmm. allegedly yeah he has 20 to 30 other pilots who have come out to him and given him like you know stories that are pretty outlandish you know is, is graves and you're gonna have to refresh my memory here and i may be mistaking him with someone else but was he the one who was ryan a, ryan graves ryan graves i think that's him that was a safety officer in the navy I think I think it's right. He was okay. also a pilot. He was a pilot. Yeah. He he actually had an interaction with the uh the the sphere with the with cube the inside the cube. of it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so he his approach uh or his main concern uh listening to him talk was was all from a safety, safety. perspective yep. that hey, listen guys, we've nearly hit these things. It's going to happen at some point. I say he was more than Fravor only because he um He's, he, well, I think he had a lot of encounters and then also the people that he was working with, they were having encounters all the time. And so it's just on a larger scale. Fravor is clearly like, I had this one incident where I encountered something that I, it was in his opinion from out of this world. Graves is more like, uh, we see this stuff all the time right. and we need to get to yeah. the bottom of it. Now, um, one of the things I know that the the military in particular, they do a lot of training exercises, obviously, and they have civilian um, aircraft that are involved in some of that. And uh, I actually I used to I used to work with a guy. He flew Learjets and his job. Well, he had several jobs. Uh, he would tow target dummies for them to shoot at. He would also do attack runs on ships. And so one of the things that he would do, you know, they would tell him, hey, we want you to fly 150 feet off the water directly at the this ship. And they would give him coordinates out in the middle of the wherever. And uh, he would fly at whatever speed and altitude they told him. And he would be told, no matter what they say, continue your path, fly right over the deck of the ship. He said, the guy that there's one person on the ship that knows who you are, they will not fire no matter what they say. <laughs> So a lot of faith put in this one individual that he was awake at this time. Uh, what's but what's the purpose of that? It's just testing their defenses. So as he's approaching, you know, if you approach a Navy vessel with an aircraft out in the middle of the water, they're going to call, they're going to broadcast on all frequencies. And they're going to say, you know, unidentified aircraft, you're approaching a U.S. Navy vessel. If you, if you come within x miles x feet whatever it is they say and i'm not military i'll preface that <laughs> so if i'm sp i'm speaking slightly out of school but um they uh you know they're they're giving them directions turn to this heading climb to this altitude and then that's when the fighter jets at that point would come and intercept them and take them to and figure out what's going on and so his job would be to fly right over the deck so the the, the point <laughs> <laughs> as as a civilian as a civilian oh my god and so uh it, it, you know he's how he's, much are they paying this guy <sighs> not much it couldn't those be jobs, much those jobs don't pay very well and uh i maybe maybe they do nowadays what if they but, what if there's there's a patriot on board that just takes it upon himself to like ignore orders i'm just saying you know i think it's a russian I think you should, yeah, <laughs> you should, you should carry good insurance, I guess. I, I, I don't know. But, but that is uh, what they're testing to see if they follow orders correctly. That, if they're, well, they're if testing to make sure that they're, that they're, uh, that they're, I don't know what they call their, their cadets, their, their, their soldiers, S their semen. Their semen. <laughs> Why? I looked in your eyes. We connected, and I was like, "He's gonna." He I wanted, to go, your I wanted to go there. It was my moment, and I blew it. Uh, it's uh, yeah. They're testing their semen. <laughs> he blew it. <laughs> oh, that's good. oh, this is that's getting good. deep. Oh my gosh. So, uh, anyway, they're 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 just testing their procedures. It's a training operation or exercise for them. 
Oh, that's good. The, the the point that I'm trying to make is with with Graves when he first encountered the the Q or the spheres, uh, he came back. They were doing a debriefing, and they're watching the video footage of it. And they called the CO, whoever was in charge of that ship, commanding officer, commanding officer. Yeah. <laughs> so he came down, and I remember Graves saying that he opens the door, sees what's on the big screen, and goes, "Yep," turns around and walks off. Yeah, clearly. He knew what was going on. He knew what was going on. Yeah. That tells me they were testing something in, in high, high certainty that it's us. Yeah. At least the spheres. In, in that sp- in, circumstance. In yeah. that circumstance. Yeah. It is definitely us. If it's not us, it's somebody else that we are working with, whether that's a demon or the Russians or the Canadians. Or you know? the Canadians. Apparently the British. Yeah. That's uh, been in their arms. That's it. going to do it. You gotta that's do it. it. Anyway, that's that's the point that I was trying to make with with his. You want to tax but... RT? You go right ahead. <laughs> Sorry, that was a Revolutionary War reference. That there. was pretty good insight. I that, think. I I mean, so that I'm still worried about that one guy. I know that. Not... <laughs> I'm thinking they're not paying him enough. Because I I mean, no offense to military guys, we've all met military. Just because you're in the military doesn't mean you're smart. We had a good friend in the Navy. He was the. He was the radar operator. So, you know, you get bored. You might just look up and go, oh, God, fire. Yeah. What else are we going to do today? Let's <laughs> blow some stuff up. That's... It's like that. We were talking about uh, L. Ron Hubbard when he was in charge of that vessel oh, off the coast. Totally. He was, yeah, he was he firing at the twice. fake Japanese yeah. just because he had bullets. And then they put him in charge of another craft. Yeah. 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 You just, you, some guys, you just give well, them something to shoot. They're going to shoot it. Man, that's, uh, we've all seen that documentary. <laughs> of any particular incident and there's the whether it's the yeah the regular crewman the soldier the police officer that's like i had an opening i took the shot and that's where they took the main bad guy out you know like i've been watching things with like uh the, the boston marathon bombing or like okc bombing different things like that or the uh the waco i thought you say rambo but <laughs> <laughs> yeah it'd be pretty sweet um but with the Waco incident, like, you know, one of the main interviews is the guys, the first guy to breach in there. And so usually those guys are kind of pitted as like, you know, you got to pull the trigger when the moment presents itself. So I'm with you that, I mean, if you went, if you signed up to be on an aircraft carrier, be a soldier or something, if you're signed, if you get put in the position to be a gunman, yes, you are there to be complicit with all the orders and follow the chain of command. But there's a little bit of you that's like, really, you watched, want to shoot a big, you watched big Rambo missile. and yeah. you're ready to be like, well, I mean, if nobody else is going to take this enemy craft out, then I guess I'll have to do it. I'll be your Huckleberry. You know? Yeah. So, yeah, you're and right. There's it's, nothing wrong with that. Yeah. That's the American <laughs> spirit. By God. That's why they gave us what, GI Joes when we were kids. That's what Tim Burchett would do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's circle back to the, uh, the hearing. Um, I know that you had a, an article you pulled up with, was it five kind of yeah, main, point, um, main takeaways? I thought this was helpful because as you mentioned, we had three, three, uh, witnesses at the hearing. And if anybody that follows UFOs, UAPs listens to Jeremy Corbell or Joe Rogan or anything like that, you've likely or heard- George. George Knapp. Or George Knapp, your buddy. Okay. That's right. Oh, gee. George I love Knapp. you, George. I don't mean, I, I don't know if what I said was like, oh, don't listen. Would... I feel like he has a place at the table. I just wish that there's more conversation between him and these congressional yeah. people. And like, if it's a thing, take it seriously. If it's not a thing, don't take it seriously. But apparently it's a thing. So uh, I, I, I wish there was more dialogue. I wish there was more. I listened to a lot of that weaponized podcast. In the last couple of days, because I wasn't following that podcast in the last few weeks, but they had been kind of given a lead up to it mm-hmm. for, you know, I mean, they had a long form interview with Tim Burchett, which I really yeah. enjoyed. But uh, anyway, I think from the, some of the comments I heard George Knapp make, he, he's surprised that he's being brought into this as a credible source. Because yeah. I, he's kind I, of, I saw him tweet. Like if I had to sit there for one more minute, I, my ass would have been numb or something like that. Like he was I like, think he's used to people <laughs> poking fun at him and him being on the fringe. And he's, you know, kind of gotten used to being in that role. And he's like, see guys, I told you, but he's also aware that the public at large sees him as a, a fringe character. 
So even though his reporting has always been, he's given voice to people with fringe ideas. Yeah, but he does it in a very professional way, and that he's he's very clear about this is just because Bob Lazar has a story. He's like, I'm not. I'm just giving Bob's just story with, a platform. Yeah. I'm not saying I'm not reading into it. I'm not I'm not telling you to believe his right. story. I'm just telling you his story. Yeah. You know. Um so anyway, if you follow anything like that, the three characters that we just spoke of are the three people. They're not characters, but Amigos. Uh, they are kind of characters if you're looking at this as a narrative. They're characters now. Yeah. They might uh, not have been before, but they're definitely <laughs> characters now. Um they didn't disclose anything new in that hearing that you wouldn't have heard on, say, a Joe Rogan type. Or interview. mainly on the David Grush's uh, News like Nation. The, yeah, News Nation. Yeah, because a lot of times he was even like they'd ask him a question. He go, "Well, just go back and look yeah, at what I said at right. News Nation." That's what I meant. Seemed like the objective was to get all of that just down on public record. Yes, under under you know uh, what do they call it when you go to jail if you lie? Um, oh, under oath. Yeah. Yeah, under oath, under perjury. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I pulled up, I came across an NBC News article that was uh, the five most memorable moments. And what I thought was helpful for that, since like you've kind of gotten me to where my head's like deeper into this than it normally would be, is like these five points are what people that go about their daily lives. That makes me so proud to hear you say that. <laughs> this is what normal people are taking away from this. Okay. Well, right? let's hear it. So uh, point number one. The quote is, the government is absolutely in possession of UAPs. And that's just calling out the fact that David Grush is alleging that the government is in possession of the craft. And so um, whatever you'd like to say about any of this stuff, I mean, I can read the that know, is, article. That piece, is but the three of those that's gentlemen. That points. was the main thing they're yeah. saying is uh, UFOs are a thing. Right. Yeah. And that we have them. Yeah. And so and Grush is the one you're right. Like. Braver is a pilot, Graves is a pilot. They're both saying, I've engaged with objects or craft, but none of them have said, I've seen one, I've touched one, other than I've engaged it in my plane. Um, Grush is the one that's like, well, I've never touched one, but I know a guy who says he did. Well, and he did say that he's referred all of that, those testimonies right. to the inspector general. So um, he's, he's, which being 100%, 100% fair, probably follows the pro yeah. proper chain of protocol to say you come across that you don't just go to to the public right you do probably refer them to the inspector general and you then when the proper time comes because it would be top secret i mean i've been pretty would think. cavalier about grush in the past and still i think like if i like I, I made in my notes, we should start a drinking game for every time that he would say, oh, I can't disclose that in an open yeah. environment. Um, but I will say he sounded extremely. Since you said it, I'm just going to drink. Good. There you go. <laughs> um, he sounded really knowledgeable about statutes of different chapters of process and procedure in terms of what can be disclosed at different times. So um, I do understand like George Knapp, one of the comments I heard him make in the last couple of days was like, when you what you tell your friends you're also telling your enemies so to yeah your point like yeah we can't disclose all of these things because well, that's what i mean by yeah. you wouldn't you wouldn't just say yeah there's a process to where you you know and in, in his own interest he doesn't want to go to prison um but also in the you know as an intelligence worker he's got people he has to report to and process he has to follow so i can appreciate that but he says that yeah there is craft he's talked to people and if you want to chime in you just grab that mic from him you don't need to ask permission he'll he'll have to just... no i the only thing if i was going to add anything to it and because i like you am very frustrated with his ah, i can't tell you yeah. but i i do find that more or fairly often at least he he does offer to uh what do they call it when they sign a skiff Correct. when they have a off the record. I got an moment. opinion about the skiff. So I, I would love to hear the, the opinion about the skiff. Well, it might just be nothing, but one of the things I, I've watched that Joe wrote, th this is one of the most frustrating things about this. As somebody who owns stock in TTSA, as somebody who's like followed this for a long time, um, one of the things about that Joe Rogan podcast with Tom DeLong, a particular moment in that podcast it seemed like Tom DeLong really went out of his way to explain to Joe Rogan what a skiff was. 
I don't know if you recall that, but I remember it kind of sticking out because it was almost like he wanted to talk about it. He's like, he even said, uh, I've been, I haven't been pulled into a skiff. And then he's like, you know what a skiff is? It's like, and, and they had a whole thing where he's like, let me explain to you what a skiff is. And then at this, <clears throat> it felt very similar, like a skiff and a skiff. And it's like, now everybody's talking about a skiff and you're like, why are we, why are we bringing up this word? I, I, I don't know what to make of it, except it's like, to me, I just I, linguistically, I'm pulling out, like when people start pointing out odd things that I, I don't know why my mind like latches onto it. And like, they're mentioning that word a lot. Why? I, I don't know why. I think probably on a regular human level, it's a matter of all of those people are aware there are a lot of cameras on them and they're having to think quickly and articulate things quickly. And you tend to lean like there, there get to be these crutch phrases, and that skiff happens. My concern people. would be that 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 crutch phrase is, is a talking point. Oh, for given sure. Given to them now by an agency be. to say, okay, yeah, <laughs> talk about if they ask about this, just say it needs to be talked about in the skiff. You're talking about, you know what I mean? uh, You're talking about Tom DeLong to Rogan. It's like it made me think. Well, he's like educating. You it ever on... been to a toga party? Yeah. <laughs> Let me explain what that is. Like all the cool guys invite you to this party, but only the cool people go to it and you wear the, well, I mean, it's a toga party. I've never heard of a understand. toga before, but now I get it. Yeah. Um, now it's part of my language. I do feel like though with Grush, he, more than any of the UFO guys that, that we see frequently anyway, or the, the more uh, famous ones, he seems more of the government plant type to me. Uh, Partly because MK Ultra. Going, going back to, well, it could be MK Ultra. It just seems to me that he leaks just enough without really giving any details. And going back to what you were saying, you know, he does obviously know he, he, he's got the map of what he can and can't say without going to prison. But some of the things that he's offered up seem to me without any type of classified experience or anything like that seemed to me like, yeah, they would not let him say that unless they wanted him to say that. So to me, he seems to be uh, the cat that's kind of driving this, the mouse, you know, so you think they want him to say what he's saying. Absolutely. That's what I, I mean by I when they say is. whistleblower, there's some yeah. aspects of what he's doing that it's like, yeah, he's a whistleblower, but it seems like the military complex wants him to whistleblow. That's right. I don't, I, I don't see him as a, voluntary Which hey that, guys i saw that, this. that could that could be an element of disclosure i mean if you're like we have to disclose this you, you kind of have to do it in an organic way or like a and it, it, the military being or the federal government being so good at what they do <laughs> their organic way is kind of like uh what's that one skit where uh i forget what comedian it was it was it was a steve buscemi when he's acting like one of the teenagers oh you know what i mean <laughs> no but uh, yeah i was just picturing hey, youth <laughs> hey, exactly yeah it sounds like something you'd see in an arrested development sketch or something like that yeah like Hey, yeah, exactly. Hey, youth, or let's um. Hey, I tell you what we'll do. Let's put Grush on it. That guy's totally natural and likable. Yeah, yeah. They'll eat him up. They'll love him. And I've heard again. I mean, I I don't care for his demeanor, but I just am. I heard more than one person say they got like uh, Corbell was getting texts from his friends, like what a jackass, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and I've I've really actually warmed to him in the last couple of days with the idea in mind of like if he's not just a government plant if he really is a guy trying to do the right thing he might just be a guy that's well like, he'd have to be i think yeah. I, I i do think that like say he is a useful idiot like he'd have to be like i think the same thing with fravor and all these guys if it's a massive psyop i don't think it's possible to train them to say every line i think you would have to orchestrate something to where these people honestly believe what they're saying yeah yeah that could and you're never going to hear from the the men in black who are like making sure it all happens right yeah you know it, it, going back to the whole term whistleblower i mean it, none of us have probably ever been in that situation and and hopefully none of us ever are. i hope that i am no. <laughs> <laughs> so, but why the hell but, do you think we're doing but, this <laughs> but hey man if you're going to be a whistleblower you, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna take it down you hit what better opportunity do you have uh, do you have than sitting in front of a congressional hearing yeah to say guys all right, I'm going to go to prison and disappear. I'll be Clinton by the end of the week. But here's the here's the deal. You'd like to say Vince Fostered, but Vince Fostered. Okay, yeah, it's a yeah, you don't want to get on the hit list. I understand, but uh, yeah, I mean, if you're gonna if you come on, Pookie, let's burn this mother down. You know. It's just... <laughs> 
Okay, let's uh, number let's two, do like Hillary yeah, and let's power it, through the rest of these, okay? <laughs> well, the number two is that non-human biologics were found at the site. So this is another uh, allegation from, from Grush. Um, so like we heard on the News Nation interview, but at least here he's on record saying that he has been told biologics. That we have biologics, which I've never heard anyone I don't remember refer if they to made a the, body as a biologic. Yeah. Um, government. Yeah, Grush is... Yeah, Grush's comment, at least in the interview with News Nation, was you know when there's a plane crash, you're going to have pilots, and so to be blunt, we're talking about kind of like alien the bodies. Inter interdimensional creature comment. You would think that make people go, "What? Totally. The hell yeah. are you talking about? Like really?" But they don't. They didn't really like freak out. They're no. kind of like, "Oh, well, that's well, interesting." Is, yeah, I mean, here Dig this is that. This is point number two in the NBC story, which to me this is like, that should be, should be the one. leading yeah. bullet point. Yeah, so. um I don't want to jump on to the next thing too quick since we're talking about what a big deal it is. But if you, if you, if people are not responding to this information in the way that a normal, rational person would respond. That's my problem with it. You know what I mean? It's like it's because, like, it's like, it's like a joke. And then it's like what they're saying is the most outlandish, like mind blowing thing you could imagine. And everyone's response is kind of like, Huh? It's really bizarre that like like years ago you said they put this in the New York Times. Nobody seems to care. And now I'm kind of at the same point with this hearing where I'm watching. I'm like, this is like regular news and actual grown-ups in suits talking about this, guys. <laughs> Nobody seems to and like uh, you know, uh I think George Knapp was talking about he got on all of his regular news sites the next day, kind of regular terrestrial news. Uh -huh. The hearing didn't even come up. <laughs> really? Yeah, it just wasn't oh in the headlines. You know, I follow this uh, stuff. I mean, not to the degree that you do, but had you not sent me that text that morning, I would have had no idea. Yeah. I mean, this wasn't. This was not headline news by any means. God, that's that's your sign. Is something going on? That's all I mean. Something's going on. Yeah, we're like, just being... when humans are not acting like humans. When yeah. humans are acting, they're being manipulated, pacified. They're somehow, being, yeah. uh, you know, there's something going on, and I don't, I don't know what it is. Except, God, yeah. If I go back ten years ago and you said this stuff, people would lose their minds. They would freak out. Anyway, number three. Number three is officials must establish a safe and transparent reporting process. This is uh, kind of the big bullet point from Ryan Graves, which I think, I mean, he just struck me as a guy that is really just concerned for his his brothers up in the air. Like, hey, we're driving around up there. There should be a way for us to say there's other stuff up here. Let's not run into it. Yeah. Um, And at least somebody in charge could like pull him aside and go, we actually pay a guy that Kokomo knows to fly around. <laughs> Something would be helpful. Um, so, yeah, it says here, some lawmakers and witnesses pushed the federal government to establish clear channels to communicate UAP information with both the public and the military uh, and said that the military should establish a comprehensive reporting process for unidentified. Now, I know you're not military, but do you have any sort of protocol as a as a highly decorated uh, civilian pilot or, or commercial pilot? When you see a UFO, what are you supposed to do? Well, um, historically speaking, uh, you did nothing because uh, wait, 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 but, but but I'm wondering has any of has this conversation ever happened from your employer? Like, oh, absolutely not. No, they've they've never even talked about the idea of UFOs. Has there been any official like, if you see something you can't identify, what do you do? Um, so, uh, to my understanding, um. I've never actually filled one out, but uh, there, there at least at one time was an official FAA document that you would use to report a UFO and going all the way back to like the beginning of pilot school or man, I, I'm honestly, I, I couldn't tell you, uh, but when, Dave's, you, Dave's when, you, but but up, when you recently got hired, when they're like training you to work with the company. There's no conversation about like UFOs. No, of course not. Um, wait, 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 now no, that of course said, not, because we just had a hearing <laughs> in front of Congress. There should be no, of course <laughs> that, not. Okay, that's the, fair. The, the, the comments should be like, yeah, there should have been. They, well, yeah, yeah, maybe there should have been. Uh, you know, they. Uh, uh, no, we didn't cover that. And and now that you ask, I actually we have a uh, we have an event reporting system that covers dozens and dozens of things that may take every place. conceivable. Need, 
Yeah, uh, I need to go actually uh, dive into that <laughs> read it and see if there's. <laughs> no, I, no, I'm listening. Yeah, so, you're gonna get fired. So I have. So I He's have. It. So I he have filled this. out <laughs> event reports of, of of incidents or events, I'll say, and um, but uh, I do. I need to go look and see if there's one for you. I, just, I, I would suspect. In light of all of this, doesn't it make you kind of think like, well, shouldn't they have given us some kind of. They probably should. You know, I, uh, I'm especially if, that if, the, uh... Grush, if what Grush is saying is true, what he's saying is it goes back to the 1930s. So it means anybody in aviation who is really, really experienced would know about this. They should. Uh, if it's a thing. Interestingly, it's a conversation that comes up somewhat frequently in the cockpit. And yeah. the, the number of, as you say, highly decorated, high time airline pilots that have spent years circling the globe very few of them have either have seen or will admit to having seen uh any any type of but UFO. that's that's changed as of recently hasn't it um you just know, anecdotally in your own experience haven't you like noticed maybe more maybe it's me like asking you to ask them well <laughs> now the, the conversation with me personally it does come up more frequently than i ever would have imagined um thanks to you guys in this podcast but uh you know uh, anecdotally speaking i would say it's it's probably no different because i can't speak to i can't attest to what the numbers were prior to me asking these questions but i think that the majority of these guys that i'm flying with i'm a first officer so i'm sitting and i'm the co-pilot so the captain's the guy with all the time and experience those are the guys that, that you would expect to have seen something um those all those guys also come from the day and age where uh you know see something sweep it under the rug you know they did they everything rode on that and if they start walking around saying Most hey that's because of like your psyche valves and stuff like if you fail a medical you're gonna lose everything um yeah absolutely i mean you we don't do a psyche valve uh unless it's faa mandated oh you that don't do a said, psyche valve and you're a pilot that being said you're uh, making me very uncomfortable <laughs> even more incredible yeah I don't, so yeah. you could be psychologically unstable and a pilot you you can be uh wow. however if you if you how, make however if you make this UFO report that I think Dave's getting ready to uh, present us with, they might consider you psychologically unstable, in which case you could be. Uh, Let's hear it, Dave. Mandate. I did a quick Goog. Give it a Goog, JMO. Um, FA.gov, there's a Section 8 unified flying object. How to report one. It doesn't give you a link, but it does say in Section A to uh, report to a phenomenon reporting data collection center, such as the national ufo reporting center so i went to that and it's you know like a kooky ufo looking site which to me is just like well this just adds to the stigma that ryan graves yeah, like no one's gonna, you're talk not gonna report to that if i'm if i'm a legitimate pilot and i go to the faa.gov site and i track down this page and it says what you got to do you're not is... going to go to faa though you're just going to go to your employer well your but boss, i'm saying and be like, like dude i saw something weird yeah but night. if your boss blows it off and you think i'm serious i really okay. should report this if you're a ryan graves type then you go to the site that it tells you to go to you're like i'm not trying to be on unsolved mysteries i actually saw like a real thing <laughs> it's actually wanna... what mufon does is they've they they've they've actually had a lot of trouble with selling a lot of the stories to things like unsolved mysteries and then like weird lawsuits back and forth. <laughs> well, and, and actually counter to what you were just saying, as far as going to your employer or your boss, that is actually much less, less likely to happen than going to the FAA. Uh, the reason being is, is anytime there's some sort of incident is what we call it in our world, um, where there's been a, a phenomenon <laughs> where there's been a possible collision or you, you messed up and we're at the wrong altitude. There's a number of things that, could lead to this stuff. We actually fill out there's there's two different forms. One is called a NASA report. One is called an ASAP. Wait, um, it's called a NASA. A NASA report. It's the National Aerospace. Not NASA. Uh, not NASA. <laughs> as far as I am uh, <laughs> aware, uh, but it uh, it allows you to it it allows. So, so the whole goal for the FAA is to make things safer, and so well. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> uh, and so they they learned long ago that if they if they may if you were penalized for reporting things that happened, nobody's ever gonna know about it and be able to fix that yeah. and prevent it from yeah, happening that makes again. Sense. So it gives us an avenue to report, hey, I screwed up. So are you supposed would you like be inclined to go to FAA over employer? 
Um, so, um, so the ASAP report, it's actually something in conjunction with the FAA and my employer. They both get both the report. Both know about it. Uh, a NASA report is something that goes just to the government and, uh, the NASA, the NASA report. And, um, uh, so anyway, so no, I don't, I, I don't know that, uh, you know, in, in the, uh, in the airline union world, we avoid talking to the bosses as much as possible. So, uh, that's maybe that's part it. of the problem there. It could be, it could be, but, uh. That that just doesn't go well for a lot of people. So what's that last point? Were we on four or is there two more? There's one more. We're two. on three. Yeah, four is a lot of what we just discussed, just the stigma associated with sightings, silence, possible witnesses. So um, we really kind of, we've gone over that, but that was one of the points that this NBC article hit. Okay, and that, that last better be a good one. Uh, number five, UFO spotted accelerating to supersonic speeds. So this is more, uh, just touching on David Fravor's account, which another podcast I really enjoy is uh, Necronomapod. I've referenced it here before, but they did a sort of a debrief. And, uh, one of the guys on there was like, man, I really love that Fravor was so matter of fact. And then he says they were at 80,000 feet. And then he kind of goes, by the way, that's space. So it came down from space to like right above the water it's nuts yeah it's so nuts the thing i'd never heard or maybe just never paid much attention to is when graves was talking about um these craft just sitting still in hurricane winds mm -hmm. he's like that would be like throwing a bobber into a river and the bobber Not just the sitting there yeah. against the flow of the river so um anyway this is just the fifth point is saying uh, it's just kind of given a summary of what well, Fravor's account I, I think that the, the, the takeaway from the hearing that I've heard other people talk about is that this is kind of officially getting the ball rolling as far as yeah. people with these claims, uh, people with these experiences. The government is allegedly going to start taking it seriously as if they haven't been since 1930s. Um, which if what Grush is saying is true, they've been taking it very seriously since the 1930s, um, but maybe not. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. I, I mean, a lot of what I've heard is like, well, in the next year, you're going to see a lot like they're, they've been briefed. They've been told after this hearing, probably Bruce and uh, all the other, and AOC got into a skiff and they were then shown the pictures uh, shown the uh, high definition footage. I, I don't know. I mean, that that's what should be happening next. And we might see some stuff coming down the pike. That's like, holy cow. I don't, I don't suspect that we will. I think it'll be the exact same thing we've always seen. Um, you know, this is, this is uh, a bummer. Yeah, it is a bummer. <laughs> I agree. But this is a little bit of, you know, Congress thinking their boss, the military thinks their boss. Congress says, "No, you're going to show us this." You the, think and the the, military that a lot says, of this is a distraction? Um, no, I don't think it's a distraction. I just don't think they're going. You know, it's it's too many too many chiefs, and mm -hmm. and everybody's everybody is going to hold on to their everybody's going to hold on to their piece of the information. There were two things that stuck out to me at the very beginning of the hearing. The, uh, the congressman that led off the hearing that was introducing everyone. One of the things he used, he used a term that, that just almost made me stop listening right away <laughs> is not because I don't believe it, but because I'm like, ah, this is going to go nowhere is he used the term cover up that he, that this is a cover up and they're trying to get to the bottom of it. They're tired of the cover up. So, uh, you know, that struck me as like, okay, yeah, clearly it is. We all believe that we know that, um, Congress knows it. They're not going to get anywhere either. They, they mm -hmm. haven't yet. The other thing that they brought up was Congress specifically requested that these pilot reports that are being made that are, apparently are happening more frequently now. And they are, I've actually heard them on the radio, uh, I've never, I've never personally made them, because um, there's <laughs> that's, that's where I need to go. Um, but uh, Congress specifically requested that all those pilot reports come directly to Congress, and they were immediately denied that through the uh, intelligence community and said, "Nope, not going to happen." So I think we're going to continue to see this, uh, you know, hamster on a on a wheel thing and I, I, grainy it, videos. It's and, entirely possible. Do you? Um... 
Do you feel comfortable uh, talking about some of the things that you've seen in the sky? I do. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't want to get you in trouble. I want to make sure that Mike's good and close to your mouth there. No, so it, uh, it's, it's, it's certainly nothing that'll get me in trouble. Um, you're, you're, so just so people know, Kokomo is is a pilot. We're not going to say with who, but you've flown for how many years? Uh, a little over 20. I a think. little over 20. Yeah. And prior to me bringing this to your attention, maybe like three, four years ago, UFOs was not a thing. It was like never it, heard it of was, it, never really seen one, never really. It was not a thing, and it's it's something that even as a child I was interested in. Um, and uh, you know, I I don't know if you were in the group, Kevin, and some of us that that read books, and we were all ate up with it as shot as children. So it's not that I've been flying around at night going, ah, there's nothing up here. I've I've definitely been looking at the sky, but I I. I I certainly look more. Uh, I pushed you. <laughs> you have pushed I, me on the said, edge. Look, look harder. Uh, you know, I think I like think, in in Sim, is it Simba in the Lion King? Look harder. <laughs> <laughs> He's alive. He's alive. <laughs> he lives in you. I uh, <laughs> You know, my my first my first encounter, I'll say, um, actually wasn't an encounter. It was actually something. It was an exchange that took place. Uh, between us and a uh, air traffic controller, so when we checked, I remember you called me right after this happened. Yeah, it was the you know we was were, it over Phoenix? Is that right? Uh, it was in that area. Yeah, it was in yeah. the Phoenix area. Uh, Winslow, Arizona, was at where the event actually happened, um, and we were approaching that that uh, that place. And the controller, when we checked on, he said uh, he 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 said uh, use caution for UFO activity in the area. And that used. was the first time you'd ever heard that over the radio. Ever. Never heard anything even remotely similar to that. Um, two you know, years, two, three years ago? That was probably, yeah, three years ago, maybe. Yeah. Um, and so I remember I just keyed the mic and I said, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, no, I'm serious. He said there were five or six of them reported by multiple aircraft over Winslow. So needless to say, the next hour and a half, the captain and I were like glued to the winds windshield, you know, and, uh, when we left, uh, and you know, as you as you progress across the country, there's they're, they're called center controllers. They'll hand you to the next guy, and the next guy who's watching that sector. And um, when we left his sector, he handed us off to the next guy. He said, "Well, did you make first contact?" And I said, "No, we didn't see anything." He said, "Well, you'll get your chance. It's here all the time." And uh, that was my first like real world encounter uh, here all the time. That's that's those were the words he used. Phoenix Lights incident. Now, now that being said, Winslow, Arizona, it's the middle of nowhere. It's uh, it's uh, I guess geographically, it's probably a, it's south and probably a little east of Groom Lake, which is what y'all know as Area Fifty One. Um, and so, I would say pretty s certainly that's something we're testing. Um, you know, especially when you think about, you know, commercial aircraft, uh, particularly airliners, they're in the range of 33 to 40,000 feet is where we're cruising. So if they're seeing things below them, probably not otherworldly, uh, possibly, but. Yeah, but 80,000, 80, like Fravor. 80,000 is a different story, yeah. which takes me to the next series of, of things that I saw. I've, I've actually seen, witnessed these things five, five separate occasions. Um, twice off the Northeast, uh, up in the, uh, Boston area, once actually down towards Florida and then twice inland, once over Colorado and once over, uh, probably the Michigan area. And all five events were basically the same, a uh, number between two and five lights that would light up super bright. Uh, I know I've sent you guys some videos mm -hmm. of them. They would come out super bright. Uh, and then they would just, after a few seconds, they would fade away. And so once they faded away, uh, a little while later, they'd light back up and you'd see them again. Um, some of the pilots that I have flown with, and I've heard other pilots discussing this, that it appears to them that they're operating in an orbit. So they're out there flying in a circle. That being said, whatever it like, is. Like orbiting the earth or a, no, 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 an no. orbit in uh, like or their own like kind of orbit? Yeah, like a holding pattern. Okay. You know, they're, they're, so they believe, uh, a couple of guys think what they're seeing is, you know, like an afterburner lighting goes out as they turn. You see it fade away. They come mm. back towards you, so it disappears, and then it's back again. I can't dispute that at that type of altitude and range that we're seeing these things. Which is what, like 50,000? Oh, I would estimate... 
between 60 and 80. Wow. I mean, it's that's high. It's I'll, I'll explain it this way. And I'm purely guessing on these numbers. But what we're seeing. So the first time I saw them, for example, we were um, we were over the Cleveland area headed to the northeast. We witnessed these things clearly out over the world. They're, they're way above us, way far out. That exact same night, uh, aircraft crossing the Atlantic, we're seeing them halfway across the Atlantic. So for us to be seeing them in Cleveland and for them to be seeing them out there, they've either traveled that distance or they're at an incredibly high altitude. So, mm. um, and I, you know, typically you don't see them move. They light up, they go out. They light up, they go out. And you had another guy with you who was seeing this too, right? And yep. he also was like military. Yeah. The first incident, the guy was, was prior military. He, uh, and he did a lot of uh, special ops stuff. I, I believe in, uh, like the, I think it was C-17s or something. So he would drop like the Rangers and the SEALs out the back kind of stuff. Schwarzenegger. So, yeah. He was yeah. basically Schwarzenegger. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, he, uh, did a lot of night vision goggle stuff. You know, so you obviously stars, satellites, things like that. They show up. He's really seen pit. a lot. He's seen a lot. Yeah. And I, uh, the first when I first pointed him out, I said, I, you know, I'd seen him like three or four times. I said, I said, man, are you seeing this? And he said, he said, oh yeah, those are military flares. And I'm like, oh okay, that's cool, makes sense, whatever. And uh, now he's kind of glued to him. And 20 minutes go by, and they flash three or four more times, and he goes, man. Those are not flares. He said, I've seen, he, he told me, he said, in my, in my military career, I've seen a lot of things. I've never seen anything that I can't explain. He said, I have no idea what this is. He said, it's way above us. It's way far out. He's like, man, we don't have anything that flies that high. And that he knows of. That he knows yeah. of. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and so um, every time that I've seen them, the other pilot has, has also witnessed them with me. Um you know, some guys serve military uh, pass. Some guys are civilian pass. They all have different takes on it. It always starts interesting discussions. Um, but what I found recently, I've flown with more than one individual who has said, hey, man, have you seen these lights out off the Northeast? I'm like, well, as a matter yep. of fact, I have. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, and so the, 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 the stigma, I guess, or the discussion is starting to be more open. But so just to go back to like, what exactly have you seen? In your case, you've seen lights. I have seen lights, lights very high in the sky, yep. appearing, disappearing, seeming to move in some sort of pattern. And now, you don't know what it is. Now, I will personally, I the things that I've seen do not appear to have moved in a in a pattern. I To me, they're fixed. They light up, they go away. They light up, they go away. With the exception of one event, which was the one over Michigan, where I actually witnessed two of them cross paths. So they, they, you know, one moving right to left, one moving left to right, they like swap sides. That's the only time I've actually seen them move, you know, and, and the reality is that at the kind of distance that I'm assuming these things are at, that we're witnessing them at, it would be very difficult to determine movement hmm. um, unless it was lateral to your position i mean or perpendicular to your position it's because it's so high up you're so just like you're so just looking away. at something far yeah. away it's yeah. how far did it move how fast did it move absolutely it all depends on what what the specifics are yeah but um you know but i've heard i've heard other guys describe it to them it appears like something in an orbit is what they say so you know if flying in a circle or an oval racetrack pattern hmm. um which you know is not a even even with myself not being able to see that, um, it's not unfathomable. Well, if you're you know, looking for to... tasty humans to eat, that's the way you want to do it. You know, you can circle around like a hawk, and then you see one down, and you just go down and get them. That, that... <laughs> I mean, it's, yeah, that it's nothing, be... according to Fravor, 80,000 to 50 feet is nothing to them. It's less than a second. So uh, they just circle till they see a tasty human, and then they just... Yeah. Yeah, I, you know... <laughs> I think you're right. I take I, this very seriously. Yeah, and it's uh, no, it's uh, <laughs> well, I actually do. The only, this very the only, the only problem I, I have with your with your theory there is they they appear to be over the water, and I don't think they're finding many humans tasty out there. Whales. Tasty whales, tasty yeah. whales, porpoise. Hey, if you're gonna kill something, go for the biggest, well, the biggest beef. We've been we've been at this topic for about an hour and six minutes, which is fantastic. I love this. Um, will, will you come back and talk to us again? 
Absolutely. I'd love to be on so, anytime. Anytime it, I'm around. Before I'd... you go, though, I want your opinion because I want to get you on record in case <laughs> I can get you fired. In case I get fired, <laughs> at least. In, it yeah. seems to me like these things are like one of three things. It's like it's us, meaning, you know, technology that we've advanced. It's uh, some sort of intelligent creature from another place other than Earth. Or it's demons. <laughs> if I had to say... <laughs> If you had to be, if a gun to your head, if I had to say, what do you think this is? What would you say? I tend to believe that it's us or another government um, and just, just technology that we're unaware of at this time. That being said, I also believe that there is something else otherworldly, whether that is little green man or not. I don't know. What I do know is, is it would be just, it would be incredibly arrogant of us to assume that we are the only i mean we know that the universe is not only infinite but infinitely expanding that there is no other a lot, a lot of base that's right you know and I've, I've heard arguments you know when they talk about crashed craft you know that yeah if they can make it all the way here surely they knew not to run into the mountain yeah but you're also assuming that they're at that level of technology this could be their first attempt or multiple attempts, according to yeah, Christ. like when we send probes out in the ocean or out into space, and right. how many except space for that time that we blown up? for that time, except for that time that we went to the moon and everything was perfect, nailed it the first. But every time every, every other time expedition we've had yeah. to the North Pole, South Pole, whatever it is, usually a failure. Usually there's a crash, and we learn, and then we grow. And um, except for the moon, first time uh, everything was perfect. No problem. Pictures were perfect. Went exactly to plan everything yeah. well thank you for joining us for the uh, conspiracy dad podcast uh kokomo i hope you come back and join us again uh dave do you have any sign off words or wisdom you want to put out into the universe um i'd just like to leave us with a parting word on from timber chet oh uh, yeah yeah he's my new favorite american as i said earlier let me find the quote real quick because this was in my i i came up with my top five moments we don't have time to get into them and that's fine but my top moment was when, uh, well, I had two, but the one I'll say is uh, Burchett's talking to Grush about, uh, well, we're talking about a uh, billion dollars that's missing here. You're saying this misappropriated funds going to this program that's this clandestine? And Grush is like, yes, that's correct. Yeah. And he says, well, we know that we audit the Pentagon every year. I've been here five years and they fail the dadgum thing every year. <laughs> In the public sector, you go to jail for that crap. If you sell over six hundred dollars worth of stuff on eBay, you get a call from the IRS. I, I like that, that attitude. Guy rules. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that note, we yeah. will uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thank you for listening, and uh, please uh, tune tune in, share, like, subscribe, all those things, and we'll see you at the next one. Thank you. So we're talking about Tic Tac the candy, not TikTok the Chinese.